Hello, I'm Kyle Adams, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about pixel precision and what exactly that means. <music> pixel precision is a really important part of icon design. It makes everything crisp and clear, but more importantly, it respects screens. Every screen has pixels. Every screen is composed of pixels, and that is how you get an image from a screen. All of the millions of pixels or hundreds of pixels, whatever it is on any screen, that's how you receive information about what you're viewing. So if your pixels aren't precise, if they aren't lined up correctly, you get these kind of blurry, muddy icons that just don't look that great. I'll explain that a little more in a minute, but that's kind of a high-level overview of what we're talking about. I'm going to go to the computer and dive into that, so let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at how you can view pixels as you're creating icons and why that's an extremely important thing to do. This is probably one of the fundamental things that, if you keep practicing it, will improve your icons significantly. So I'm using Adobe Illustrator CC. Uh, if you're using any other version of Illustrator, this will work the same. And even any other app, these principles will apply. My personal choice is Adobe Illustrator, and I'm sure I'll explain that more as I create more videos. And also in this tutorial, I'll have a little section where I talk about why I like it for pixel work. So to start things off, we need to set up our document to measure things in pixels instead of the default which is inches. You can see that the defaults inches when I select the shape and we go to the top here. This is our transform bar here. And you can see that everything is in inches. So what we want to do is change this to pixels so that we can see exactly what our pixel measurements are. To do that, you'll go to Illustrator and Preferences. I'm doing all of this on a Mac. If you're Windows, I believe you would go to File Preferences or File Settings and get this same panel. So if we go to Units, you'll see that currently they are set to inches. And our type is set to points. That's perfectly fine. Most of the time, type is measured in points, not anything else. So we'll leave that alone. We'll change general to pixels, and our strokes will also be measured in pixels, and we'll just press OK. So now you can see at the top that everything on the transform bar has been set to pixels, which is great. This is exactly what we want. So let's get started talking about what you should be looking for and why this is so important. I have two shapes here, and they may seem very similar. They're two rectangles on their side, and they don't look that much different. Right now we're in vector mode, and you can tell that by going up here to the top and noticing that it just says preview. By default, Illustrator is a vector program, and that's great for us because vector means you could just zoom in infinitely and this object will never lose its clarity. Which is great for working with icons. This is one of the reasons I really love working with Illustrator while I'm working on icons. I can go in and look at the details without trying to dig through pixels as I'm doing that. If you look down here at the bottom left, you'll notice that it says 1200%. This is how far we're zoomed in right now. And these shapes still look great. So we can go in here and work with the finer details and clean them up, different things like that. But if we want to preview the pixels, you'll use the keyboard shortcut Command Option Y, and that will show the pixel grid. And this is exactly what we want to look at when we're editing icons at a close view. You want to make sure that the icons look pixel precise because ultimately this is how they will be displayed. 
It's great that Illustrator shows vector format, and there are some vector formats that you can export in, such as SVG, but we won't go into those right now. Most of the time, you're going to be exporting as pixels. So if you export as, for example, a PNG, that will be pixel base, or even a GIF is also pixel base. So what you're previewing here is what you'll actually be exporting in the end. And you might notice that something has changed. Actually, two things have changed. One, at the top left here, it now says pixel preview rather than preview. And this just denotes that we are in the pixel preview mode. If we were to zoom further out, you would notice that the pixel grid disappears and seeing that pixel preview at the top is very handy. The other thing you might have noticed changed is the top here. So on this rectangle, we have a nice smooth clean edge. And the one to the right, we have this weird kind of lighter color at the top. And you'll notice that in vector mode, that wasn't there. It's not something we've added. It's supposed to be the same shape. Our problem comes when we look at the lines. So if you select your object, I used V, or you can select the selection tool at the top left of the tools panel and select the object, you'll notice that the lines for the object go right in the middle of this pixel line. For the object on the left here, you'll notice that the line goes right with the pixels. So I've purposely made this one offset so that you can see what happens when you have loose pixels. We'll get into a little more detail about what that really does for an overall icon here in just a minute. But first I want to focus on the transform panel that we looked at earlier. If we again look at the image on the left that is made correctly, and we go to the transform panel up here, you'll notice that 27 pixels by 27 pixels. There's no decimal place. That is a rounded number, and that is exactly what you want to have with every icon you make. If we look at the image on the right, you'll notice that the transform panel shows 27.625 by 28.25, and that means you're off. This is why you're getting a weird extra row of pixels here. And the technical term for this is pixel hinting. And that just denotes if your pixels are off or your pixels are on. So we'll change this real fast. And there's some pretty easy ways to change it. By default, Illustrator, if you choose up or down here, will actually go to the nearest rounded number. However, if you are constraining width and height proportions, it might knock the width to a different size. So we'll turn that off for now, and we'll change width to 28 as well. Now, even though we've done that, you might notice that this still looks off. And the reason for that is that it's not sitting at the right position. So on top of being pixel precise in a width and height form, you also need it to land on the pixel grid at an even location. So to change this, you can either use the transform panel at the top for X and Y, and you can again increase those where they're rounded numbers, or we could have optionally used the arrow keys, which is a great way to move icons around different pieces of icons you might need to shift different directions and to do that if you use the arrow key you'll move it in a pixel precise way. So that's a look at how you can size things to be pixel precise. Now let's take a look at a more in-depth example. I have this toolbox. You may or may not recognize this toolbox from a blog post I did. This was the header icon for the blog post. And one of them I've changed and the other one I've kept the same. Again, in vector form, they look pretty much identical. 
you can see all of the details and there's really no difference between the two. Now I'm going to go to 100% so you can see what they look like at actual size. To see that, you can either go here to the top where it says 100% or look at the bottom left where it also says 100%. So these two, two toolboxes look very similar. I'll go ahead and switch to pixel preview mode by again using the keyboard shortcut command option Y on a Mac. And you'll notice that the left side looks a little bit sharper than the right side. Maybe you can't tell this yet. A lot of this comes with paying attention to pixels. So the more you practice looking at pixels, the more you'll be able to see that things are just a little off. I'll start zooming in here and you'll start to see that the one on the right is definitely blurry compared to the one on the right on the left. So on the left here, all of our pixels line up. And here they just don't. They're off. There's some ghosting of pixels here and it just looks looks very jagged and messed up. If we select the toolbox, you'll notice that up here in the bar, our width is at a decimal point and our height is even. And that's why here you see that the pixels are still aligned correctly. But if we select this other box, we can look at the transform bar and see that width is still 160 and height is 118. That's the big significant change between these two. That's why you want to pay attention to pixels. That's why you want to keep those in mind as you design any icon. And it won't be perfect at first. It may take some time to keep looking at these closer and closer. But as I said before, your eye eventually is trained to just see pixels and know that they're off and understand how to fix it. So that's a high level overview of pixel precision and why you should start focusing on that. Like I said in the video, if you really just start focusing on pixels, start looking at them while you're creating things, you'll start to get that eye for it. You'll start to really be obsessed with them and kind of bothered when things don't look right. So just keep looking at those. Don't worry if you can't see them at the beginning. Don't worry if you don't notice this all the time. It takes some time to get used to, and it's just one of the steps in the process. So I hope you've gained a lot of information from this video. Please leave in the comments what you would like to learn. I'm still starting this whole thing up and getting things going, and I've had a lot of great feedback already from people on the newsletter or the blog. If you'd like to check either of those out, they're at kyleadams.me slash blog. And you can find out some really good information through that. I've been sharing things for about a year now, so there's a lot of content up there. Thank you again for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm extremely excited to start sharing through video. This is a new medium for me, and it's one that I really love. I've wanted to do this for quite some time, and to be able to do it